Hey, how's it going, everybody? Welcome back to Art of Creation Homestead. My name is Jason. It's Southwest Ohio. If you're not familiar with our location, it's a beautiful Saturday. And it's getting late in the year, though. We still have a lot of things growing. We're going to take this day, we're going to kind of walk you around, show you what's growing, what's not growing, harvest a little bit. I'll just give you a little picture of how things are growing here on our half acre property where we only use the back half of our yard, okay? So keep in mind when we just go around here that everything we grow, we're growing a lot quarter acre, okay, or less. We're not using a ton of space here. First we have these uh, these tomatoes we planted for fall growing and now look, this has kind of got beat up. We got a ton of rain earlier in the week and it beat the heck out of these tomatoes in the front. And all these we planted for fall. These are Romas in the back. These are a variety called Subarctic Plenty. And they took a beating in this rain last week. This one's still doing all right. But this one, obviously, he got beat up real good. This one's obviously got beat up. Look at that. And these are pretty rough looking. They look like they took on some blight, possibly, here. But, I mean, there's still tomatoes on, but we're going to have to see how they did, how, how they developed. These Romas are doing all right, though. There's some growing there. They did. They are spotty. Again, we got a lot of rain. A ton of rain in a few days. If you're not familiar, then like driving rains <laughs> are really tough on growing vegetables. And it rained here for you know, off and on for about three days. We did get some really hard driving rains. And so that beat, that beat them up. But I think the fruit should survive. We'll have to wait and see. Obviously, we still have, what is it, September, September 10th today. So we still got, you know, five weeks or so before we get before we get a frost typically and sometimes it can even go to november before we get anything damaging so uh we'll have to wait and see how they do but i believe we're going to be able to get some tomatoes off of them and behind me for sure is one of the most awesome things we've grown this year okay look how big that leaf is i'm i'm, I'm six foot three i'm a big dude so like massive leaves here and if we can get to it we'll show you what we got growing under here it's a trombone cena this, these things are huge. This is actually the smallest one we've grown so far. It's probably not quite ready to harvest. It's getting close. We've got some more female blossoms coming on, trying to develop. We've, we've only got, I think, two plants of them growing. And we've harvested four large ones already. That's going to be the fifth one, I believe. Maybe we got a picture we can show up here in the side of some of them. They've been really awesome, really flavorful, great producers. Uh, so really off these two plants, we've produced a lot of food here late in the season i mean we didn't get this planted early maybe mid-season but we've produced a ton of food off of just these two plants here late and going to get some more so it's trombone stina it's like a if you haven't watched our videos on them it's like a uh, it's like an italian vining zucchini kind of is what they call it and it's it lends itself really well to all kinds of preparations and it's just delicious and obviously produces a lot of food in a short amount of time these Blue Lake pole beans have been kind of funny. Um, they, as you see, we got some, a little tree has fallen from our neighbor's property over on top of these vines and pressed these, these grape vines down over ours. And our beans have vined up inside of them. And if I can get down here to show you, you can see we've got beans growing really high up in there. I'm gonna zoom in a little bit. Those beans are growing you know, 12 foot in the air or more. <laughs> right there and right here. They're way up in there. Beautiful beans, I'll back it back out so get a relation of where we're at. It's pretty funny, Angel, Angel is really short. I'm moderately tall and so <laughs> she came out here to pick some beans earlier in the week and she's like, I, I can't get to those. I, and I, I came out here and I was like, heck, it was pretty tough. I had to pull those vines down and kind of stretch way up there to try to get to them. We had some large beans, like seven inch long beans up there. It was really, really good beans, but uh, <laughs> kind of difficult to get to. But I mean, they're vining well, they're growing well. I'm, I'm gonna, probably gonna grow those again. If you, if you haven't been watching necessarily, you might, uh, you may not know, but we fought rabbits all year long. <laughs> We had issues with a rat, with two rabbits. We had several rabbits born in our backyard this year. Uh, wild rabbits, not nothing. Nothing we're growing, <laughs> nothing we're we're raising. But we did have several rabbits born in our backyard, and they were able to. The small rabbits were able were able to maneuver through our electric fence and get in here and eat 
you know bean plants like crazy since they were coming up so we fought rabbits like crazy for our beans and i mean they're gone <laughs> nature took it ran its course on one of them and and uh, or some of them and uh, i may have ran my course on one i did not kill it but he's not here <laughs> but uh he so we have we've we fought for those beans so much and so because hey i love i love green beans but um so we're finally getting some and they've been those, those have been really good producers sweet potatoes have grown been growing like crazy they're kind of done growing at this point i believe they're not ready to harvest they've got at least they're done vining how about that we should have a few more weeks where they're really ready to harvest but um they've, they've been doing really good i think i still be vining some here but they've grown really well they're in grow bags just like our our regular taters were in grow bags and they've, they've fingers crossed i think we got another good harvest of taters coming but, but they're sweet taters which is far better some more fall, fall tomatoes that we've had we planted these are subarctic plenties again they didn't take the quite the beating from the rain don't look like I and mean, they're still kind of worn down here but they got some growing we'll see how they do some here and then some over here so that's a variety that we're just kind of messing with never grown it before want to see how it does late in the year want to see how it does in different in different methods so these are planted close together in grow bags the others were planted close together in the ground but just kind of kind of used the uh, chicken wire there to, to prop them up with they seem like they're doing good obviously the jury's still out but they look like they're going to be a, a good producer of tomatoes if they'll pump those bad boys out before we get some frost and down here we have our carrots that i planted and it's time to thin them we need to get these things thin because they're not going to grow like they are. They're not going to get good carrots out of them. Because obviously, look, they're, they're way, way too close together. So real fast, I'm going to show you how we how I go about thinning them. You know, it's it's a, a very simple thing. Kind of look in here, find which ones you don't want first. Okay, like okay, I don't want this guy. Too little. This guy's smaller, but they spread out. There's several. If you look, there's several. They're together. I got them planted too thick, and it's on purpose. So, just kind of grab one. So I don't like this guy. All right, he gone. Don't like this guy. He's gone. And then you got these two left. All right, he's gone. And he's the one that's left. So you find which which one you want is done, and you rake up some dirt around him, just like that. And you do that for all of them. Very simple method. It's kind of tedious, <laughs> but that's that's how we grow our carrots. Obviously, there's several methods out there, but carrot seeds are so small. Okay, they're very, very, very minute, and because they're so small, it's really it's really difficult to to plant them with like any precision. So that's how I do it. And then you just thin them, and I won't squat. I won't I won't take the time to squat down the whole time. It'll kill my knees. So I'll find like a a small table or something sit those grow bags up on that table so that I can thin the carrots appropriately with, uh, without destroying my knees and my back. Green stalks have been great. These peanuts right here, these are peanuts. We're excited about them. They they've look like they've grown well, but with peanuts you don't know, and we don't know. We're it's totally inexperienced with peanuts. We've grown them a few times to mild to, to low end success, okay? But um, they're, they've grown really well. You never know until you, until you dump them out. But they look like they've grown really well. And these beans right here have been really productive. Uh, all on a green stalk. Green stalks have done well this year. And by the way, if you've used our code to buy green stalks sometime, we do appreciate it. Thank you so much. And I hope, we hope that you have great success growing your green stalks the same way we've had growing in them. And again, if you haven't used our code, but you think, hey, you got a code? Yes, we have a code for green stalks. And so you can get, you know, $10 off of, you purchase seventy five dollars more at Green Stock Garden by using our code Art Ten and our link below. Uh, we show you how to grow in green stocks. Again, we talk about them because hey, we love growing in them. <laughs> That's plain and simple how it is. We grow and things we use. We're gonna talk about them. Then we're gonna walk over here. We got more beans growing. They're awesome. It's my favorite green bean. These are called North Carolina Long Greasy Beans. Now, one thing we noticed is that. The bean leaf beetles love them. The bean beetles love them. Grasshoppers love them. So they get kind of beat up, see? If you look, they do produce a beautiful green bean. Like this is, these are nice. Very, very nice green beans. They aren't quite ready to pick. 
typically you can fight that with just some diatomaceous earth we don't we won't use chemicals like seven or anything like that on them so but that diatomaceous earth does fight them does fight it very well and uh <clears throat> we just haven't done it this year we got more beans right here if really more beans yes more beans these are blue lake bush beans that we planted late and they're growing really well uh, here's a nice here's a nice bean so we got some good beans in there we planted them kind of tight and thick just to see how they're going to do just trying to get production so maybe a little a little too tight but it's okay they're still producing good beans really nice beans in there see it's gonna be a nice bean just has to get fatter some more over here as well i'm gonna take a short break in the gardening to uh give these chickens some soaked feed uh, our chickens love soaked feed it's something we do to help cut the cost because we soak the the kind of the dusty uh, particles and kind of grains they haven't touched from the regular feed we soak that we, we dump it into a bucket soak it and we feed it to them later and they really enjoy it and it helps us to have less waste for their feed as you can see they, they're excited about it they come to the door waiting on it. as you can see they really love it Laugh at Tony. I may have got a little too much water in it this time. I don't know. I soaked it in the I soaked it in the dark last night, so <laughs> I may have got too much water involved in it. If I did, we'll notice it in there and while it's in that pan, and I'll uh, mix some fresh grains in to keep it a little drier. But now Angela and I are gonna we're gonna harvest some of these honey nut squash behind me. We have a lot of honey nut squash. They're really small. Okay butternut squash in here too but these are the honey nuts on average they're probably this size some are bigger than others first time we've ever grown them so we're excited about so that see what they taste like just pop them off really hard stem good looking harvest here these are a couple of butternuts they're, they're a butter bush butternut squash so, so they were a bush variety all these honey nuts here don't know if there's more in there or not they were they, <laughs> They couldn't find anymore. This it's kind of a jungle. Typically, you don't want to when you harvest them. You don't you want to leave a stem. These kind of broke off without their stems. So hopefully they'll dry really well and we just use them, use them first because the longer the stem is, the better they're gonna keep. Oh, and we've got this big old kush all right here. Nice, nice boy. If you're looking to store your winter squash when you after you harvest them, you just lay them lay them in a cool dark place for a little bit. Let them cure. They need to cure. Okay. And that way they'll they'll store longer. If you kind of pile them up together in a box or in a basket or something, they might mold. Okay, so you need to let them dry, let them finish curing, and they'll be good storage for a good while. That's the second cushion we've, we've harvested. The first one was a big boy, and we have a picture of it, me holding it. Maybe we'll put it right here as well. But um, so we love those cushions. They're delicious, tasty, and very historical squash. So they're fun to grow. And after that, we just harvested these last couple of containers. We have taters. Uh, not much there. We knew there wasn't going to be. The plants just didn't do well. But hey, we planted them, and there's enough in there to eat, so we're going to harvest them, right? A little a few Yukon Golds and a few Russets. They'll eat. And thank you guys so much for watching. We do appreciate it. Okay, my name is Jason. This is Art Creation Homestead. We love you guys. God bless you, and goodbye.